In the research project that I've done with my co-author, Aziza Katagiri, we looked at 18,000 declassified documents from the National Archives and Presidential Libraries across the country to get a full and comprehensive view of the Berlin crisis between 1958 and 1963. And we converted these documents into digitized uh, data in order to test existing theories about how public and private diplomacy work in the midst of crises. There's a lot of scholarly debate about whether or not public statements are more costly because they're done in front of an audience compared to private statements which are seen as being costless and cheap. But what we ultimately find is actually evidence that goes in the opposite direction, showing that it's often public statements um, that tend to be the ones that are, are incredibly noisy, are not very meaningful, and it's often private statements that are the ways that uh, elites communicate with one another in a very direct way. And we show this uh, using um, a combination of machine learning, text analysis, and statistical analyses. In our case, uh, we were lucky in that uh, these groups of data were sort of separated into categories that we really wanted. So in terms of private documents, we were looking at documents from the Department of State, uh, which was cataloging all the cables that were coming in and out, uh, but you know all were confidential. Uh, for the public documents, we were looking at the Foreign Broadcast Information Service, which was a, a CIA-run project back in the 50s to try to capture everything that the Soviet Union was saying through its radio statements and public speeches. And then we were looking at White House documents as an indicator of what uh, the Kennedy and Eisenhower administrations were thinking behind the scenes in response to the um, kind of activity that was coming in front of their desks.